Hey guys, welcome back to the JPM Performance Channel. Once again, time for our shop tour. We are rolling through December. It is, here we are, December 11th, exactly two weeks until Christmas. And guess what? Since Christmas falls on a Thursday, just like Thanksgiving, which always falls on a Thursday, you guys get to watch the shop tour with your family for Christmas. I know you're excited about that. Two weeks, we'll, we'll be doing it, unless John's already on vacation. I don't know, we'll have to talk about that. So we'll get into our shop tour. Um, last week, you saw that I had uh, the Honda motor sitting here. There's no Honda motor sitting here because I was, uh, we, I talked about how I was waiting on a couple of parts. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, but what I do have is, go figure, a Miata engine. So this is Mark McAllister's uh, F-Production Miata engine. That's his white car right over there. So you can see I've got the bottom end completely done. And I was just getting ready to put the cams in and I was thinking to myself, you know, I use different assembly lubes for different things. And so I thought I'd show you guys some of the different assembly lubes that I use and where I use them and why I use them where I do. So we'll kind of start with the bottom end. So um, you guys have probably seen a lot of this stuff. So this is Redline assembly lube. The Redline stuff I really liked for years and years and years. They redid it with this new liquid formula. I, for, I didn't realize I was buying this because I'm going to show you why. That's what it does. It is so thin that it just doesn't stick to anything. I mean, look at that. It's, there's just nothing there. So what I'm using this for is for priming oil pumps. That's all I'm using that for. On the bearings, I actually use their, either their uh, other formula that's not the liquid formula, um, or I will use this Permatex stuff. Now this Permatex stuff, as you can see, is very sticky, but it's not super thick, but it's super sticky. But it's a little thinner than some of the other ones that you'll see. And the reason that I use that on bearings is so that when I torque everything down, I can still turn the crankshaft. If you go using some of these assembly gels, now I like this driven stuff for like camshafts and actually that's what I've got on this camshaft right here. You can see how thick this stuff is. This stuff will not run off. Period. It is thick and it stays wherever you put it. Um, the reason I don't use it on bearings is because when you put it on a bearing you can barely turn the crankshaft which means you don't really get a good feel for what the crank trap is turning. The other reason that I, I use um, the thicker stuff up on the camshaft. So you think about when you're first priming your engine, the oil's gonna come into the block and it's gonna go down the main galley and straight into your bearings first. Um, it's gonna go straight into your mains and then into your rods. It's, it's part of the galley will come up through the cylinder head and then it's gotta go through all the galleys before it comes up into the oil feeders and feeds the lifters. So this camshaft is gonna turn quite a bit before it has forced oil actually feeding it. Uh, and not only that, the, the lobes of the cam obviously are running directly on the lifter. So this stuff stays on really good. So this Torco stuff, I know I've got a lot of different assembly loops. The Torco stuff is what I like to use on um, the piston pins, inside the pistons, uh, the small end of the, of the connecting rods. This stuff sticks, but it's not super thick, and uh, it works really good for that. My dad actually gave me this stuff. He said he didn't like it. This is uh, Mr. Ray Soil. I actually use this stuff on camshafts too. So it reminds me of the Joe Gibbs stuff, the driven stuff. And so I'm kind of using it up. He gave it to me because he didn't like it. But I'm just using it on the camshaft. So that's kind of how and why I use the different ones. I, I, I firmly believe that not just one works for every application inside of an engine. It's my personal opinion. It's my channel, I get to do what I want. So I'm just sharing. Tip of the day. I know, kind of funny, assembly lube. So we were talking about Jolt's engine and how I was waiting on the front engine mount. Um, and here it is. 
So why is a front engine mount in this monster's box? He also sent me the, uh, the skeleton for the inside of the engine crate that he did not have done before when I got the crate. So it just came in. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna put the top of Mark's engine back together and then I'm gonna finish this one up so I can get it in the crate, get that heading back to him before you know it. Now last week, you saw that I had two Miatas sitting on the lift. Um, obviously, Bill Hingston's old Miata was sitting there and then we had DJ's uh, NA Miata over here that needed to be dyno. Dino, um, got DJ's figured out, everything was cool, got my master switch, finally and got that all done, dynoed beautiful down the road. Um, we had talked about the transmission that was in Bill's old car. Well, here it is. You know why? That baby sold in about two hours after the shop tour launched last Thursday. And then I proceeded to get about five more texts and calls about it. So what did I say last week? First come, first served. Transmission is out of the car. Uh, you can see the shifter assembly is complete. Comes with this awesome Scribner box, which is what uh, they always ship these transmissions in. And it also comes with everything you need, the drop gears, the mount, the power plant frame, the drive shaft, all of this stuff. So the guy that purchased the transmission will actually be here in just a few hours. And we're gonna move this on down the road too. So we're looking good. Um, Obviously, you see that that car is not here. It's because it is already off to the body shop for the clip fix, all the bodywork fix. It's all at the body shop. So two Miatas out of here, which is actually pretty good. I did finalize the install on Ken's cool suit. I don't know if you guys have seen these. Um, he actually had, you know, just a uh, ratchet strap holding this down last time and it just completely crushed the box. So Cool Suit makes these great mounts, Velcro mounts for the boxes themselves that comes with it. So this thing's all wired in, it's ready to go. I tested the motor, we're looking good. So yes, we did get something else done on Ken's car this week, so that's awesome. So looking good. Um, it's also been confirmed that Ken is not gonna be going to Florida for the races. It's kind of a two-fold situation. Uh, you know, we talked about how he didn't wanna really have the car hauled all the way to Florida for a super tour. But as it turns out, his daughter's getting married on January 10th as well on the East Coast. So he wasn't gonna be able to make Sebring anyway. So it all works out. So now our plan, our new plan, is going to be probably Eagles Canyon, which is where I'm hoping to go to for my first race as well. So. Eagles Canyon is in North Texas, just north of Dallas. Awesome racetrack. I went there a couple years ago, had a great time. I think it was two years ago, pretty sure. Had a great time, awesome racetrack. I know Ken will love that. Really looking forward to that. So that's where we're at there. Mazda 2 wise, well, look at this. Engine and transmission are out. Looking good. Um, boy. I got some cleanup and the header took, the header took quite the uh, staining here on the, uh, on the coating. So the next thing to do, now fortunately, fortunately, looking at all of this, the only damage I've got, you can kind of see it right here, the wiring loom got melted here, but none of the wires got screwed up. So I just need to re-loom this. I'll double check everything. But as far as that flash fire went, I don't see any dam major damage. So I think we're gonna be looking good. Just need to kinda, <sighs> next thing is <laughs> solvent on a rag on my back and get underneath there and get this thing cleaned up, get ready. Get ready for uh, the install of the other engine and transmission. So, um, I think we're looking pretty good. We do have something interesting to show you guys this week. And the only reason that these are laying out here is because they're getting ready to go out to a body guy who is gonna make us some body pieces. So you're like, what are these weird looking things? These are molds. 
So Ken owns all of the molds for the wide body Integra. So we've got literally everything here. The bumper, the nose, the deck lid, rear quarters, front fenders, and a hood. All the molds. So got a guy coming to pick up the molds. And uh, this is obviously not something that I do. And he's going to make us a set of nice, probably carbon fiber, nice lightweight spares. So uh, at some point when inevitably we have a situation, um, we'll be able to have some spares in stock. But yeah, these are all the original molds. And uh, Ken ended up buying these from somebody, whoever it was that had them. I honestly don't know who had them. Ken's owned them for a few years and I've actually been storing them for a couple of years too. So I'm actually happy to get them, get them out of here. So that guy's coming this afternoon as well. So that's kind of cool. Um, you can see, well, here you go. Not only was there a hole on the front side of the engine, there's also a hole on the back side of the engine. So you can see all the way through. Uh, at some point, once I kind of get the car under control, get the other engine transmission in, um, get the, get the, uh, the front uh, core support installed, while I'm kind of waiting on the radiator, probably get into this, have a little show and tell for you guys on what a proper, properly blown up engine looks like on the inside. This is only one word for it. it's going to be ugly. It's not going to be pretty at all, but um, I want to strip it out, save all the bits and pieces that I can, that I can potentially use for the next build, learn and move on. That's kind of what we do. So appreciate you guys watching. As always, hope you've had a great week. We are uh, weather-wise, I know I love to give the weather report. Today it's very windy. Um, it was actually, yesterday when I was dynoing DJ's car, it was actually in the mid 50s. Next thing you know, it'll be in the 20s, you know, here we go, Kansas winter. But um, yeah, not too bad, a little windy, but we're, we're getting close. Next thing you know, it's gonna be Christmas. Next thing you know, it'll be January. We're gonna be rocking and rolling. So keep chipping on your race car. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. Take care. See you next week.